Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. I'm Nick. I'm Ian. Today we're talking about uh, record pri the prices of records and really kind of what has driven the, this crazy rise we've seen in prices over the last few years. There's a bunch of links down below. Make sure you go check them out. There's links for the Vinyl Den Facebook group, for the merch page, for the Spotify and Apple Music playlists we've put together every week, and the Patreon page. Make sure you go check all that out. Of course, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time we release new episodes. So we've all seen this big, crazy rise in the price of records over the last few years. I don't know, you know, probably f five or six years ago, I was buying records. You know, a single LP was going to run you 18, maybe 18 20. To, 18 to 25. Yeah, we'll say, yeah. I would range. say a lot of the records I bought were like 20, 22 bucks. Right. And those same records today are going to run you, you know, 30 to 35 dollars. You know, five or six years ago, a double LP was going to run you, you know, 28 to 35 dollars. And now a lot of them are, you know, $40 plus. Right. So we wanted to talk about today about what we think is really kind of driving the price of records. And I know it's something that not just, you know, that we've talked about on the channel, you know, several times. I know a lot of people out there in the vinyl community have talked about it. We talked about it on the Facebook groups all, also. There was a uh, Twisted Sister reissue that just got, uh, that was just recently announced. I don't know what album it was. It was Blade. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's the list price on this thing is 75 bucks, which is just absolutely insane right. for a double LP. Well, and not only that, but it's it's not even one of their great albums. They're, if it Even if it was Stay Hungry, which was their absolute best-selling album, it wouldn't be worth $75 yeah. uh, for a double LP. Unless it's in a box and it's coming with a bunch of other stuff, then I could, I could see the justification. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But under, under the blade is a good album. It's just not. It's not a seventy five dollar album. Yeah, and kind of along the, kind of along the same lines is uh, I don't know what album it was, but uh, Vinyl Me Please. So they just built a big their own pressing plant, and their first release was a Pearl Jam album. I love Pearl Jam. They're one of my favorite bands of all time. The, it's a double LP. They're charging sixty bucks for it, which is as much as I like the album. It's just not worth sixty bucks to me. Right. I know there's a lot of people out there that it is, and I'm not saying. You know, not not to buy it. You know, you do what you want to do with your own money. But for me personally, it's not an album I was going to spend more than even if it was like forty or forty five bucks. Okay, I get it. I, I probably would have bought it. But that extra, you know, fifteen bucks, fifteen twenty bucks, I just couldn't uh, drop on that album. Yeah. And I, and I know that Vital Me Please is trying to add in some cost to help pay for for their uh, their new pressing plant. But that's something you build in over like a, a you know ten or fifteen year period, not one release you know right exactly yeah i i can tell you now i've I'm, I'm i'm a frugal person when it comes to spending money it's been pointed out on this show many many times um just within the last couple of weeks yeah exactly so um i <laughs> by the way someone did leave a comment uh, on that on the album we were talking about uh, metallica mm -hmm. and you said that you hadn't bought their new album yet and i said i had two copies someone put a comment and we're like hey i hope you gave them a copy of uh 72 seasons which i did not you did you know no, <laughs> no. it's both, fine both I copies are still right behind i don't me. want his charity <laughs> records um i have it on cd but yeah. i just haven't bought the, the the vinyl copy yet the we're not to be political because we're not it's we're in an, an age right now. Things are going on in the in the world right now where the cost of living has gone up, and it's not that I don't think that affects vinyl records. No, and that's kind of what I was going to get to. But as a result, people have less and less money to spend, and the record companies don't seem to understand. They haven't learned from their past mistakes that people will get to a point where the cost of buying physical media will be too high and they don't care. They'll yeah. just go back to streaming. Yeah. But the vast majority of people don't aren't looking for the best sounding, you know, best sound quality. They just want to listen to the songs they like. No, that's why that's why Spotify is as popular exactly. as Exactly, Apple Music, same thing. And and there's a there's an era, there's a place for all that. But people who are willing to spend the money on physical media shouldn't be um, price gouged and I, th I feel that's what's starting to happen because as as you're going to show here the cost of producing a record hasn't really changed that much yeah. over the last say 10 years but the price of buying records has gone up what would you say exponentially 50 50 plus percent I, I, yeah you know, way yeah. higher than the cost of inflation yeah, too absolutely so. 
So I should preface all this by saying that I got this the this pricing from Third Man Records. You can go on their website, you can price out everything yourself. And this is all pricing that I got earlier this year. So we're recording this in the end of September. I want to say it was the probably January or February when I got this. Prices really haven't changed since then. And this is all for like pressing 3,000 copies is what I was looking at. Which is pretty low end. I mean, if you're talking volume oh yeah the price should go down with the volume. price does go down so, so if you, uh, you're looking at three thousand like, pressings if you were taylor swift and you're going to press a hundred thousand copies of an album obviously your pricing is going to go way down per unit for per sure unit, for yeah. sure and that's why you, if you look at her new album it's actually priced pretty decently i want to say it's like 30, and, in, and in a lot of 28 cases, to 30 bucks for her new album we don't want to make it sound like all record labels and all artists are gouging i don't even think it's the artist no because if you look at like like uh fat records which is uh, fat mike's record label you know they're just a small label mm -hmm. their albums are still you know 18 to 20 bucks right and i found a few albums here and there that were brand new in that range say yeah. 23 dollars and i'm you know so if you're going to want to press just a single album you're looking at this is you know, with, with the cover, with, you know, the the packaging and everything. Obviously, this does not include, you know, actually shipping out the, the product. And it doesn't, because obviously the, those prices vary. And it doesn't factor in the price of fuel for shipping, which fuel prices obviously have gone up. And that's where the big price increases have happened with, with production. I get that. But the actual production of the album for one LP is about $6.70. So when you're seeing a single LP on your the the shelf in your store for thirty five thirty eight dollars, like I said, it's gonna cost less than seven dollars on average to press that album. The same thing with the double LP. You're gonna pay about twelve dollars and forty cents to press a double LP. Obviously, like I said, there's lots of other costs that go involved in that. There are you know uh, you know rights holders that are they're getting paid every step in the process. There's a price increase. But to tell me that you're paying you go to go from thirteen dollars roughly for a double LP to sixty or seventy dollars, that's just a, a crazy huge price increase. Yeah, it's it's a markup that d shouldn't exist in in an industry that we can say with certainty is fickle. Yeah, um, and because we've seen the ups and downs of it more so in the last say twenty to twenty five years, but there were ups and downs in it even back in the sixties and seventies. Yeah. Um, just not to the same extent, but with the advent of digital digital music, this shouldn't be this shouldn't be happening yeah. to this extent. You know, reasonable markup, say uh, fifty percent markup on an album that would still put a, a six dollar album. If you do a fifty percent markup, we'll say we'll say twelve dollars for a, for a single LP. Once you figure in all the extra cost, um, you know, a fifty percent markup still just puts it under twenty dollars. You know, I, I think if you want to go a little higher, you push it to twenty two dollars. No one's going to complain about that. I think that with, with yeah, but people at every step in the process and we both come from, you know, we both, both work, work retail. retail yeah. So we understand that there's a markup in every step in the process. So, you know, every little step, there's, you know, a 10 to 20 percent markup every time. I would say that I would say thirty five to forty dollars top end for, for a, a single for, for a double lp oh yeah no i was talking single yeah. yeah for a double lp i would say 35 to 40 dollars mm -hmm. is an appropriate price yeah. that way you know all your every step along the way is is making what they need to make off of it above that is really just price gouging to me yeah i agree and i mean i would even go as far as to say i would pay up to 30 dollars for a single disc depending on the album oh yeah absolutely uh, but i think more reasonably it should be say in the 22 to 28 dollar range where what are, where, i guess where i would separate that for is uh if it's a gatefold i'll pay a couple extra dollars if it's a gatefold release i know that uh, uh red hot chili peppers when they released those two albums last year mm -hmm. there was only one pressing of the 25 pressings of each one of those albums that came in a gatefold it was a deluxe edition i paid a couple extra dollars more for it because right. i'd rather have better packaging for the album yeah and i i would agree with that and that's the thing it if you're getting more for your money, there, there's there's an argument to be made for paying a lot more. But most of the time, you're not. You're just getting your your standard releases. Yeah. You know, especially with new releases. You might get color variants and stuff, but that's not going to really affect the cost of the manufacturer. Not really. Um, and just because you may press 
a thousand copies opposed to ten thousand copies of the of the black vinyl when your color vinyl is only you know whatever a thousand the the value of that doesn't shouldn't be affected you can add an extra couple bucks and that's it yeah because what's going to end up happening and another thing i think adds to the price the cost of a vinyl going up is you're going to get a lot of people saying oh there's only a thousand copies i'm going to buy 30 or 40 of those so i can sell them on ebay or discogs for two hundred dollars yeah and you know if someone really wants it they're going to pay two hundred dollars for it but the record companies see that and they go well if they're going to charge that well we can charge fifty dollars for that you know and it just it it over it i think it artificially inflates the the value of things but bring you brought up colored vinyl the interesting thing i've seen over the last year and i don't really before that i don't remember this happening is you're starting to see black vinyl be the more limited release right i've seen that on at least four or five releases this year where there's actually more colored variants or or quantities of colored variants than there is a black vinyl and i don't know if they're trying to justify some of the price increase they're like oh well you know because you know it it does cost more to press a colored you know a colored release it's not a big price difference though so I i i think they're trying to maybe at least in the market, try to justify some of that cost yeah. by doing something like that. Well, and also, I, I mean, this is just my personal opinion. I'm not sure if it really is the truth, but I see when you have so many different variants of an album, I think the perception of that can inflate the, the value of things as well. It may not may not for some, and in others it might, but I think I the think perception that, of it does, and again, when you get the people who are basically just... Uh, um, looking to flip things looking to yeah flippers that's where you're getting some inflation as well i think when it comes to like super limited releases like if there's a band that releases you know an album and there's five different color variants but only one of them is like really limited i think that is what kind of you know, over inflates the 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 or artificially inflates the price in right that. and i saw an interview with uh i don't know what channel it was on it was, uh, it was on YouTube just recently. I was watching an interview with a uh, with a guy that owns uh, a pressing plant, and if I remember what it is, I'll put a, I'll drop a link down below. If somebody wants to check the video out, I'll try to go back through my history and find out which one it was. But he was even talking about this topic and said that over the last you know five or six years, his pricing has not changed at all. He's still pressing records at the same you know price now that he was you know five or six years ago. But obviously, you're seeing this huge inflation in the pricing you're seeing in record stores. You know, a lot of that is just, in my opinion, just greed from the labels and bands. Yeah, and probably more so the the it's, labels. Yeah, definitely more you so know, the labels because the bands aren't setting prices. No, probably. and and not, and not only that, but even with these inflated prices, I mean, they might be getting a little bit more. Um, on on their royalty side of things, but it's not that much. No, and um, I guess I should backtrack a little bit on that and just say that. The bands I know that like self release stuff are way more affordable with their pricing. A lot of their albums are you know twenty five dollars or less when, when they're self releasing stuff. So obviously, it's I'm sure it's all just the the label, right? Well, that's all we got for you today, guys. Thanks for checking the show out. Make sure you drop us a comment down below. I'd love to know what you guys think of this. You know, are you guys kind of along the same lines? You think it's just kind of a, a greed kind of thing that's driving the pricing, or do you think there's more to it? You know. Like I said, these are just... Or are you not bothered by the price increases? There is definitely I mean, people out there like you know, that also. Some people have more disposable income than others, and they might see it as, I, it doesn't matter. It's yeah. what I want. You yeah. know? And I will say that, like I said, I got this pricing from Third Man. I'm sure pricing does vary from, from state to state, from, from pressing to pressing. But this is just the numbers I pulled together, just to kind of have a, a reference for the, for the show here. But let us know what you guys think. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give us the old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. That's all we got. Until next time. Talk to y'all later. Keep on spinning. Peace. Peace.